因果は成立した計画の最終段階について話そう Hey guys, it's me, Mr. 250, and welcome back to Steins Gate Zero. So, I've been informed that we're in fact about half an hour away from the end. Not really much left, not really much of a stream, I'd have to say. So, we're just gonna go ahead and do it.、Um, I just got off work and, you know, read through all those messages. So, we're gonna go ahead and finish it up. I don't, I don't really wanna wait another couple days to do this because I'm, I'm, I'm pretty amped to find out the true ending here. So, let's continue. ダイバージェンスを変え未知の世界線シュタインズゲートへ到達する計画だちなみにシュタインズゲートと命名したのは俺だなぜシュタインズゲートなのかはお前ならわかるはず特に意味はない<笑>そうだろう、uh, That's o k a b a for you Twenty twenty five AD. The future gadget laboratory, aka the lab. It was also the headquarters of the resistance organization Valkyrie. Once located in a room in a multi purpose building in Akihabara, it had been moved to a new base after the Third World War. The place was far too filthy to really be called a lab, but it was, without doubt, The home for the best minds in the world as they searched for a way to reach Steins Gate. In the center of the room, Okabe Rintaro was delivering a monologue, posing like a stage actor as his white coat flapped. Omae ga tatte iru sono basho wa. Ore tachi ga. Chris o tasuke tai to negatta kara koso. To tatsu de kita shun kan nanda. Ore no keikak no shita junbi wa kan yo shita. あとはお前次第だ最終ミッションオペレーションスクールドの概要を説明する Was Operation Skull the same one as last time? I, I think it might have been I've earned a trophy in Iki the All Knowing The final mission to reach Steins Gate given by Okabe Rintro in the year 2025 to himself in the year 2020 or 2010 sorry The parameters for the mission's success were as follows Change the results of established events without changing the events themselves. Deceive the original Okabe Rintro. Deceive the world. Skuld is the youngest of the three Norn sisters, the goddess of fate in Norse mythology. She sits at the Earth Spring at the base of Yggdrasil, the world tree where she tends to the tree's growth. Skuld is the goddess that controls the future and is also one of the Valkyries. Kurisu, aka Hyajo Maho, was staring at him, annoyed from a distance away. Kurisu was Maho's codename in Valkyrie. <sighs> Maho turned towards Hashida Itaru, who was sitting right next to her. Ne, are you a red in? Hmm, Dabun ne. Itaru was grinning. He was history's greatest super hacker, and he loved Hoin Kiyoma too much. みんなと一緒にあれを見ることになる2010年のリンタロウは恥ずかしくないのかしら大丈夫その頃はもっとすごかったからああそう魔法さえで shook her head but even as she sighed inside she was so sad that she felt her heart was going to burst she probably wasn't the only one feeling that way Itaru, Luka Ishibara, and even Rumio Akia, or Akia Rumio, who was doing the filming, all seemed a little sad when they thought about what was to come. Itaru 
And then Okabe walked towards the camera that Rumio was holding. He'd insisted on standing away from the camera with his back to give it more atmosphere. So why was he walking towards it now? Maho sighed again. Okabe took the camera from Ferris and brought the lens up to his face. Okay, hold on. That's a good screenshot right there. Good thumbnail. I might have to do something with that if I can be bothered to do anything. And then he said the final line. Kongaru. And then he stopped the recording. And the video message to the past was complete. It had taken 15 years to get to this point. It was such a long time. And at the same time, it had felt so short. よし。あとはDメールと一緒に過去へ送信。ルカコ、送り先とタイミングを間違えるなよ。はい。今のは2010年の京馬さんの携帯アドレスへ。さっき取ったイタルさんのムービーメールは2011年の。ムービーメール。
これから俺がやろうとしているのはオペレーションスクルドの実証実験みたいなものでもあるんだそう確かにそうねバトマホーンのアドレス After 2025, Okabe Rintaro would be gone. He would never come back. He wasn't saying it, but he knew it too. He stared at each of his friends for a moment in turn, as if to help him memorize their faces. Most of the founding members of Valkyrie and the former members of the Future Gadget Lab were here to see him go. Hashide Itaru. Akia Rumio, aka Ferris Nyanyan, Ushibara Luka, Hyajo Maho, and standing quietly in the back, Hashida Yuki, seven year old Hashi.、Uh, Suzuha. The.、Uh, Suzuha Hashida was hiding behind her legs. Mina. Kyomade. 俺みたいな男によくついてきてくれただが神の摂理を相手にした戦いはまだ続く次は2036年だなそれまでよろしく頼むワルキューレの健闘を祈る If she listened to Okabe's final goodbye Maho tried her best to stop herself from crying. She couldn't cry here. She decided long ago that she'd keep hope in her heart as she watched him go. Yes. So, 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 you get a little bit of 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 a little That was a special device that only the C 193 was equipped with. It was capable of tracing the space time distortion continuity created by a Kerr black hole anywhere from 70 million years in the past to the future. You could call it a time machine tracker. It had been specifically designed to allow them to find another time machine. Of course, they had only one reason for making it. To find Shina Mayuri and Amane Suzaha, who'd gone beyond the space time horizon on Tanabata in 2011. They guessed that when the battery on the C204 failed, they'd lost the ability to properly time travel. So after finding them at the C193, Okabe would give them a spare battery and send them back to this time. If possible, he'd go too. If they could do that, This mission would be 100% complete. But doing that with this prototype time machine would be extremely difficult. Okabe had to have known that. Perhaps he was thinking of sacrificing himself to send Mayuri and Suza back to this time. Ja, you go. Ooh. The last member of the future gadget lab, Shina Kagari, came running onto the floor. Kagari, I'm sorry, I was busy being unimportant. I'm sorry, I'm not going to be able to do this. I'm sorry, I'm not going to be the Upa? The old Upa? This is the old Upa. Kagari handed him a faded green Upa keychain. Is it okay? 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 
Okabe took the keychain and gave everyone one final firm handshake. Finally, he came to Maho. ね。うん。シュタインズゲートは実在すると思う。マユリさんが死ぬことなく、そしてクリスも犠牲にならない。そんな狭間の世界線が本当にあると思う。It was the first time that she'd asked that in 14 years, since the battle began on that year's Tanabata. <laughs> Okabe Rintaro, Hoin Kiyoma, answered her with a smile, but his smile seemed so sad that Maho couldn't help but cry. <laughs> now kiss. <laughs> Maho gave him a hug and swore to herself that she'd never forget his warmth and conviction. Okabe nodded a little. And with a flourish of his cape! Yoshi! <laughs> He shouted as if trying to raise his own spirits, not just everyone else's. And then he entered the cockpit of the FGC-193 time machine. Maho and the others quickly began the countdown sequence to start the time machine. Since this was a trial run. Two, they needed to record all the data they could get. A low roar enveloped the whole machine. The vibration and noise were so loud that the building shook a little. But as far as Maho could tell, the data was normal. The thick hatch of the time machine was slowly closing. Then there was the sharp sound of it sealing tight, cutting Okabe off from the rest of them forever. <laughs> キョーマは必ずやり遂げるにゃ。その通りです。不可能を可能にする人ですから。ああ。それでこそ僕たちのオカリンなわけでね。オカリンさん。A rainbow colored fog started to rise up around the machine. The sound of the engine grew so loud that it threatened to blow out their eardrums, and no one could hear a thing. Okarin! Itaru screamed, unable to hold back any longer. As they screamed, the machine started to fade away. And then... Just as he'd promised on that distant day, he followed the two Orihimes. With a blinding flash of light, the time machine took off from the year 2025, heading for a time far away, and disappeared. Uchuni 
英知を持つ者こそ最も愚かであるのは歴史からも読み取れる海に生ける魚は陸の世界を知らない彼らが英知を持てばそれもまた滅びゆく人間が光の速さを超えるのは魚たちが陸で生活を始めるよりも滑稽これはそんな神からの最後通告に抗った者たちによる執念のエピグラフ。I always liked that. Wait, 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 wait. Hold on a second. Hold on a second. That's, is that it? There's gonna be more after, right? That's, that's not it, right? Ooh. Ooh. There's gotta be more, right? There's gotta be more. And go to the world, which something I missed the rest of that. I'll have to rewatch that. Milky Way Crossing completed. Since you library, wallpaper. Is that it? Hold on a sec. Was that it? Oh, hold on a second. Did we get like all the, did we get all the things? Did we get all the everythings? I think we did. Huh. I mean, just going through these libraries. It looks like we've gotten everything and um What?
I'm gonna have to think about that for a second because I don't really know exactly what I want to say here. Um, the biggest thing, of course, that comes to my mind is what was that ending? It seems like almost like they're trying they're trying to do one of two things. It's either the ending is what we've already seen and then it's just the Steinsgate ending from the first game, right? Somehow, like, we... Uh, Okabe presumably gives them a battery and they're able to continue and convince Okabe... Uh, the 2010 Okabe to go and, uh... go through the path of Steinsgate. Or are they trying to leave it open for some kind of, like, sequel to that? I don't know. I'm... Yeah, I'm going to need a second because I really, I don't know what to think here. Alright, so... First I'm going to start with by saying um, that I don't have a perfect understanding of how this all works. I briefly skimmed through this article, which is a Reddit... Um, on apparently R. Steinsgate. Surprisingly enough, uh, there's a Reddit article someone wrote about an explanation of Steingate Zero's confusing ending and how it ties to the ending of the first game. I'm going to pull it up on screen here for you guys. I'm going to edit it in and afterwards. I'm just looking at it at my phone right now. But I'll pull it up for you guys. And I'll link it in the, uh, the video comment as well. Assuming I remember to do that. This is my verbal uh, message to myself to go ahead and do that right now that uh i'm gonna go ahead and put it in but i um, just want to let everyone know that i don't have a full understanding of all of this it's uh i'll probably need a little bit of explanation and i'll probably need some time to soak some of this in so keep that in mind um someone says after a couple days of obsessing over the confusion of an ending that was milky way crossing i tried piecing everything together please feel free to correct anything all right so in Vega and Altier, uh, 2011 Mayuri and Suza go back to August 21st, 2010. 2011 Mayuri tells 2010 Mayuri to slap Okabe, then she and 2011 Suza leave. I understand that well enough. That's, you know, we saw Okabe and Mayuri leave on a time machine. Um, this is what happens. This is what they were referring to at the end of Milky Way Crossing. In 2011, Mayuri and Suza on their way back to 2011. Or 20, yeah, the 2011 version of them gets stuck in time 70 million years ago because they ran out of fuel midway through the time travel. 2011 Okabe realizes this because they never came back. He also realizes that their mission, while most probably a success, wasn't enough to open the Steins Gate or change anything really, evident by the fact that reading Steiner never activated. However, he was a step in the right direction. 2011 Okabe gets to work in a time machine in order to rescue Mayuri and Suza from their time prison. So presumably they are just like stuck either in a void of time or they are stuck like in a time period at some point, I guess. And I, I don't know the logistics of that. Like if like if they're stuck for a particular period of time or if Okabe is just going to pop in later, you know, when he's trying to come and rescue them. Uh, let's see. All while cooking up a plan with Daru, trying to find a way to open the Steins Gate, this leads Okabe to travel to multiple world lines, which explains why Kagari was there at the ending when she must have died in Vega and Altier. The ending is simply a different world line. Decent explanation, because that was a little confusing to me as well. Alright, this is when I start getting a little confused. 2025, Okabe and Daru finally finish building the time machine, C193. It's a prototype. This is where he picked up in uh, Milky Way Crossing. They also found a way to, in order to open the Steins Gate. Daru records a message for 2011 Suza, telling her to take Mayuri with her to August 2010, and to make 2010 Mayuri slap Okabe. Which, uh, is kind of looping back to what we've just talked about. Now, of course, this didn't work the first time. This isn't the only message that needs to be sent. Uh, the other video message is the one recorded by... 2025 Okabe. Okay, let's go on to something a little happier, sorry. Um. Sure. 
Let's see. Um, the other video message is one recorded by 2025 Okabe, the one we see in the ending to Steins Gate that tells 2010 Okabe how to fool the world. Both these messages are given to Lukako, and this is where I see a lot of confusion in the community. Uh, let's see. I thought to myself if the messages are sent regardless of being sent before or after Okabe leaves in the time machine, the world line would change and Steins Gate would open, right? So in theory, the entire 2025 world line wouldn't be of much importance, because it would simply vanish after the messages were sent. There would be no need for Kagari to ask Okabe to save my Yuri, right? Wrong. While it's true that these that the keys to opening Steins Gate were these two video messages, there would still be a missing component. Suza knew about Operation Scold. Suza, that was seven to eight years old in 2025, who needed to live until leaving in 2036. Remember the ending of the first game? Suza clearly knew about the operation. She knew she needed Okabe to fail once, and she knew about the video message. She tells Okabe to view it, and it actually plays a video. She says something along the lines of, So he was right, it did work. The Suza that was there when Steins Gate opened wasn't the Suza that was with us in Steins Gate Zero. She was a Suza that was there in Milky Way Crossing. So back to the explanation. We're uh, we're just we're 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 getting almost done there. Steins Gate doesn't open by the end of Steins Gate Zero in 2025. Uh, let's get another music. Instead, we have to wait until 2036 because that's the date where Suza will become old enough to time travel. In the meantime, and until that time comes, Okabe decides to travel back to the past and find Mayuri and Suza and bring them back to 2025. These are the ones that are trapped in time, the 2011 versions. Remember before leaving, he says something along the lines of, we still have a tough fight until 2036. It weirded me out at first, but I believe it makes sense now. It is implied that he dies alongside them 70 million years in the past. Either that or he manages to save them and he returns to 2025 with a 30-something-year-old Mayuri and an older Suza, and he helps Daru build Time Machine C204. Though I believe it would be kind of strange for there to be two Suzas, so I'm guessing this is left up to interpretation. Anyway, 2036 comes, Time Machine C204 is built, Suza is old enough and has been lectured on Operation Scold. She goes back to 2011, or to August 21st, 2010 and forces Okabe to fail once. When he and Suza are gone for a minute on their first trial, 2011 Mayuri and Suza arrive thanks to Dara's video message, and Mayuri tells her 2010 self to slap Okabe, and then she leaves. Okabe and Suza return. Okabe is covered in blood, Mayuri slaps Okabe, Suza tells him to view his phone and watch the video message, he rescues Kurisu, Steins Gate is opened. And... Let's see. Other music? Alright. Um, then the author goes on to say, This is something that the game explained poorly, no excuses. I was only able to understand the ending thanks to a lot of helpful folks here. The reason I'm posting this is because I see a lot of people confused. This isn't foolproof, I could be mistaken on a lot of stuff, and anyone's free to correct me. So, you know, of course this isn't perfectly right, and you could kind of get down to speculation, because that's the problem. The game left that ending so open to speculation and it uh, it's uh not not great in my opinion I, I I could be convinced otherwise but currently I'm frankly very unimpressed and a little bit annoyed about that ending so let's go into some final thoughts shall we that was sort of a breakdown of somebody's interpretation of the Milky Way Crossing ending. Um, so characters, obviously everyone hates Kagari. I, I really, I don't like her. She felt very kind of pushed in the story. Like she was just kind of a point of friction a lot of times or there were points in the story where they really didn't have much to do. And they were like, hey, let's find out Kagari's memories or something. And then they kind of tried to tie that into the story but it, it didn't feel like it really fit in the story super well. Just my opinion on that, you know, like you could have a different one. Uh, Maho, I liked a lot. Maho was really cool. She was 
Because see, Kagari was supposed to be like a weird replacement Kurisu. Like, she even looked like her. But she wasn't. She was just like this weird, awkward character. Maho felt like a replacement, but in a good way, if that makes sense. She kind of filled that, like, technical and kind of arguably cute uh, position that Kurisu felt, uh, was in. Um, and I think overall her character was pretty good. So, I don't really have anything to say about that. Leskinen was a decent bad guy. You know, he seemed... I guess, in my opinion, now maybe... I, I'm, I am a little bit dense when it comes to these kind of things. So, so maybe you saw through his ruse earlier, but Leskinen seemed like a good bad guy, in my opinion. Because he didn't seem like a bad guy at first. And it was only after you kind of went a little farther than you were supposed to. And then uh, you find out that he is, in fact... Bad man. Um, I liked the story route progression from the first game better. Obviously, I liked the first game a lot better. I've said that before, but especially considering this ending, I liked the first game a whole lot better. And to be perfectly honest, ending it right there is, uh, you know, is okay with me. This game was fun to play through, but... And while I do like Steins Gate, and I was really excited for it to come out. Now seeing this game, um, I don't know if I'd want to say it, I'd like it to not exist. But maybe I would consider it not canon. If that makes sense. I don't think that quite makes sense. But that's kind of how I would personally file that in my head. Is that this is a not canon ending. This is a spin-off ending. Which, to some degree, it is, because we had the true ending already, and this is something different. I liked the, the way the story played out the first time, though. It was very linear, but it, uh... You know, it, I felt like it worked. It worked really well. I liked the phone trigger system. The phone trigger system in this game felt less important maybe arbitrary is not the word but it was more like do i pay attention to uh do i pay attention to kurisu or not you know that's all it really turned out to be is am i listening to kurisu or not i'm not sure how i felt about kurisu how she was in this game you know now that i think about it I was kind of hoping that there was going to be, like, I mean, I was kind of hoping for another Steins Gate ending. Like a true ending, like from the first game. I thought we were going to see Kurisu again. And not just that little bit where we saw her for that very lukewarm, not lukewarm, um, melancholy, you know, bit where we were with her for like a couple hours. Like an actual ending. So, uh, I don't know. I just, I feel like I'm missing something. That's a, that's, that's kind of what I feel. I feel like I'm missing something. I feel like I'm missing my ending. That wasn't, that wasn't an ending. And it kind of makes me, not even upset. It just makes me sad. This is good music for this, for my sadness. So I guess, um, overall rating, I would say it was, you know, pretty decent. I liked a lot of the things they did. I liked the dark, like how they kind of got a little bit dark. They gloss over the darkness and they just hinted it briefly in Steins Gate. And they dive into it a little bit deeper in Steins Gate Zero. So I kind of, you know, that was kind of cool. I liked that. I liked... Most of the new characters, minus our, our favorite one to hate. But that ending, man, that ending! It was like, with a proper ending, I feel like I would have been satisfied. Like, I would have said, this is a good continuation of Steins Gate. And because there's not that proper ending, that's what's making me feel like I want to treat this as a spin-off. That it's just, it's not, it's not, it doesn't belong in the series. As a mainline thing. And that, that kind of upsets me. That does. 
I guess I am a little bit upset. I'm sad and upset. So that's my two cents on it. Um, I don't have a lot more I want to say, I don't think. Potentially they could, you know, do another thing in the future with that and continue, but I don't even know how I'd feel about that. Let me know what you guys think. Um, let me know if you have any questions. I'd love to discuss some more stuff, especially some of the stuff that I maybe didn't, you know, seem to understand. That would be really great. And I'd love to discuss it. I think we're pretty much done with Steinsgate. Zero. I talk about it a lot, but I really, I want to go back and play Steinsgate again at some point. Now, admittedly, it is kind of a long game to run through, so I've usually relinquish myself to the idea that I want to re-watch the Steinsgate anime. And, uh, I will, I mean, I'll definitely be watching the Steinsgate Zero anime when it comes out, but I don't know if it's going to have quite the same feeling to me that I want to come back, you know, a year or two later and re-watch the entire series again and relive all of that. And I'm also kind of wondering how they're going to do it, because... I don't see how they would do it, since it's not linear like the original Steins That was really easy for them to translate into an anime. They're probably going to have to do like the true ending, or maybe like a mixture of the true ending and uh, the promise run of Cemento, because I think that one was important, if I remember right, to this ending. And the other thing I can talk about, this was something actually I did want to talk about, was when I played through Steins the original, I'd seen the anime probably twice, maybe three times at that point. One of my favorite animes, still one of my favorite animes. And so that was like a big deal for me. And I, of course, I I cut in some, uh, some anime clips into the visual novel, which um, I think about that sometimes. I, I kind of like that I did it sometimes, and I kind of wish I didn't. I kind of wish I didn't more than I did, you know, but I, I mean, I already did it, so it happened, and it's it's how it is. Not much I can do about it now. But that was one thing because I, I knew the story. And so I was able to, I guess, deal with it in a completed story sense that I knew the story and I was able to portray it. If that makes sense, I don't know. Whereas this was me, like my usual Let's Plays, not knowing the ending and following along with myself. So, it was, it was different in that respect and... Uh, I'm just not, I'm not sure, I'm not exactly sure how I feel about it. I briefly mentioned how I did, but... I'm gonna do a quick scan of some websites on the internet, see if there's anything else I want to bring up, and we'll be right back. Oh yeah, and I do want to bring up as well, I don't really understand it, and I'm about done looking up stuff. But, um, Yuki being Kagari in the, uh... The Alta, the the Vega and Altier endings. I don't really understand that right off. Um, it's a little confusing. You know, the other thing. Okay, I just remember this. The other thing I'm annoyed about is my Yuri's other friends, not Yuki, but the other two friends that I. Their names escape me right now. They seemed like they were going to be such an important set of characters, and it's like nothing absolutely nothing they felt so underutilized i thought they they were either going to be bad guys or they were going to be somehow more heavy-handed in the story because like there was that point where one of the girls had the vision of my yuri dying on the train track right and that that kind of ties into the encephalitis case right of everyone overall but other than that little bit it's like she's completely unimportant. Both of them, really. And that felt like a missed opportunity. Maybe it was too obvious. Maybe they wanted to avoid having the new best friends be the bad guys. But, I mean, Yuki was. So, I don't know. I don't know. It's a... Uh, 
it feels like they had a lot of really decent opportunities that they wasted. Let's let's. I think that's a good takeaway. Now that I'm thinking about that, that's a good takeaway. There were a lot of wasted opportunities, in my personal opinion. The wasted opportunity of not giving us a good ending that I think really would have tied the game together well. The wasted opportunity of Kagari being basically just a point of friction throughout most of the story in one way or another, either being the bad person or giving them something to do to waste their time. Having those two girls be more or less non-story important except for his very minor points. And having Okabe going to the future be slightly unimportant? It, I mean, I guess the 20, tw or 2036 was important, right? But the Okabe that like went to the future and stayed there for a month, right? If you remember that one. And then he got they got handed off to the U.S. military. Did that... Was there any real importance to that? I don't. I don't remember that actually being important. I think. I think the two girls, the two unimportant girls, whose names escape me still. They remembered that. I think they mentioned that at some point that they remembered that happening to them. But other than that, I don't think that really came up much. Other than maybe to make the future really seem like a scary place, and that World War Three was really a bad thing. Anyway, I've blabbed on for a while now. Um, I feel like we're probably a lot farther than I really wanted to be, but... Um, comments, guys. Comments. That's I'd really appreciate that. I want to know what you guys thought. How you felt. Um, any unresolved thing or anything that you know I mentioned and that you know a little bit better than I do on or have better theories than I do on, I'd love to hear them. And I'd love to discuss them with you guys. Um... Apologies if you're just like me going through this at the same time and you're disappointed with the ending, because I was too. And, uh, I hope you guys still enjoyed it, though. I'm not, I don't know if I'm quite at the point where I'd even say that I just, I don't like it entirely. But, like I said, I would consider it uncanon, non-canon. Anyway, guys, thanks for watching. Thanks for sticking around. We're going to be doing some more stuff soon. If you like visual novels, we're going to be doing uh, Daganronpa 3 fairly soon. Whenever that comes out in North America. Um, I want to say in about a month or so, I'm going to be starting Higurashi. And of course, we'll be doing other things in the future as well. But those are just for present things. As of right now on September the 18th, almost 19th. So... Thank you guys for watching. Hope you enjoyed, at least to some degree. And I'll see you next time for our next series. Bye!